Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, sacked once as a journalist for lying and sacked once as a politician for lying already. He's known for having children with multiple women. No one knows really how many children he has. And he's known for having affairs whilst married. This is the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. And I want to begin today by renewing my apology to the House, uh, to the whole country, for the short lunchtime gathering on the 19th of June 2020 in the Cabinet Room, uh, during which I stood at my place at the Cabinet table and for which I received a fixed penalty notice. And I also want to say, Mr Speaker, above all, that I take full responsibility for everything that took place on my watch. Sue Gray's report has emphasised that it is up to the political leadership in Number 10 to take ultimate responsibility, and of course I do. But since these investigations have now come to an end, this is my first opportunity to set out some of the context and to explain both my understanding of what happened and also to explain what I have previously said uh, to this House. And it's, it's important to set out uh, that over a period of about 600 days, gatherings on a total of eight dates have been found to be in breach of the regulations in a building that is 5,300 metres square across five floors, excluding the flats. Mr Speaker, I, I do think it is, impossible, it is important because this is the first time I've had, the chance I've had to set out the context. Hundreds of staff are entitled to work. And in the Cabinet Office, uh, which has thousands of officials and now is the biggest it's been in any point in its 100-year history. And that is in itself one of the reasons why the Government is look now looking for change and reform. <laughs> Mr Speaker, those staff working in Downing Street were permitted to continue attending their office for the purpose of work, and the exemption under the regulations applied to their work because of the nature of their jobs reporting directly to the Prime Minister. These people were working extremely long hours, doing their best to give this country the ability to fight the pandemic. During, Mr. Speaker, I appreciate that this is no uh, mitigation, but it is important to set Prime out Prime the Minister, context. please, just, just one second. Can I just appeal to the House? I expect it to be heard, and I want everybody to hear it. And I want the same respect to be shown to the Leader of the Opposition afterwards. So please, this is a very, very important statement that the country wants to hear as well. Prime Minister. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, I'm trying to set out the context, not to, uh, not to, to, to mitigate or uh, to absolve myself in any way. Uh, the exemption under which they were present uh, in Downing Street uh, includes those circumstances where officials and advisers were leaving the government, and uh, it was uh, appropriate to recognise them, to thank them for the work that they have done. So I hope that today as well as learning the lessons from the, Sue Gray's report, which I'm glad I commissioned, and uh, I, again, I repeat my, I'm, glad, I'm grateful to her. I, will, I, I, I hope very much that now that she has reported, we will be able to move on and focus on the, on the priorities of the British people, standing firm against Russian aggression, easing the hardship caused by the rising costs that people are facing, fulfilling our pledges to generate a high-wage, high-skill, high-employment economy that will unite and level up across the whole of our United Kingdom. That is my mission. That is our mission. That is the mission of the whole of the Government, and we will work day and night to deliver it, and I commend this statement to the House. Yeah, the only thing that surprised me about that is that um, I'm left with a sense of surprise that nothing else happened. You know, I've, I've surprised myself by hoping that, that this husk of a man would actually display some honour and integrity. The door of number 10 Downing Street is one of the great symbols of our democracy. Yeah. Those who live behind it exercise great power, yeah. but they do so knowing their stay is temporary. Mm -hmm. Long after they've gone, that door and the democracy it represents will remain firm and unyielding. But Britain's constitution is fragile. It relies on members of this House and the custodians of Number 10 behaving responsibly, honestly and in the interests of the British people. 
when our leaders fall short of these standards, this House has to act. For months, members opposite have asked the country to wait, first for the police investigation, which concluded that this Prime Minister is the first in our country's history to have broken the law in office. Yep. Then they asked the country to wait for the Sue Gray report. They need wait no longer. That report lays bare the rot that under this Prime Minister has spread in number 10, yep, yep. and it provides definitive proof of how those within the building treated the sacrifices of the British people with utter contempt. Yeah. When the dust settles and the anger subsides, this report will stand as a monument to the hubris and the arrogance of a government that believed it was one rule for them and another rule for everyone else. Even now, after 126 fines, they think it's everyone else's fault but theirs. They expect others to take the blame whilst they cling on. They pretend that the Prime Minister has somehow been exonerated, as if the fact that he only broke the law once is worthy of praise. The reason the British public have had to endure this farce was his refusal to admit the truth or do the decent thing when he was found to have broken the law. If the police decide otherwise, I will do the decent thing and step down. The public need to know that not all politicians are the same. That not all politicians put themselves above their country. That honesty, integrity and accountability matter. Now consider for a second exactly how this is meant for Boris Johnson. It's not too good, not too good at all. Everyone is coming down on him. And what does he do? He throws it back in the opposition's face. He tries to go on the attack. He should be humble and apologetic and never been so sincere and thinking of ways that he can repay the public and gain their trust. Listen to this. Uh, he, uh, throughout the pandemic, was not uh, leading many thousands of people in the fight against uh, coronavirus. Uh, he was sniping from the sidelines and veering from one position to the next. And, and today, Mr. Speaker, he's, he's done it again. Week after week, he could, week after week, he could have come to this House and talked about the economy, about uh, Ukraine, uh, about uh, the cost of living. No, Mr. Speaker, uh, time after time, uh, he, he, he chose to focus on this issue. Uh, he, could have, he, could have he could have shown some, some common sense, Mr. Speaker, and recognised that when people are working very hard together, day in, day out, that it can be difficult to draw the boundary, Mr Speaker, between work and socialising. And yet after months of his, frankly, sanctimonious obsession, uh, Mr Speaker, the great gaseous zeppelin of his pomposity has been permanently punctured uh, and irretrievably by the revelation that he is himself, well, he didn't mention this, he is himself under investigation by the police, by, by the police, Mr. Speaker, and yet, and I, you know, I'm not going to mince my words, I've got to say this, Sabir Korma, Mr. Speaker, is currently... Okay, that's enough from this buffoon. I'm not going to sit here and listen to him slagging off someone else for having a beer in a Korma. It's disgusting. He's just been found out, he's the Prime Minister of a country, and now he's sitting making up names about someone, Sir Beer Korma. Well, look at the shock on Dominic Rabb's face. He turns round and looks at the other politicians. Korma. You can't believe what, what Bobo has just said. Sir Beer Korma, Mr Speaker, is... Sir Beer Korma, Mr Speaker, is... He should be imprisoned. Instead, let's listen to some of his own ministers as well as the opposition and uh, hear what they've got to say. Certainly, we're going to get more honour and integrity from their answers than, than the albino buffoon. My right honourable friend has been asked many times about specific uh, incidents, specific events that Sue Gray has outlined. Did, has he on any occasion 
come to this House in response to specific questions about specific events and deliberately lied to us? No, no Mr Speaker, for the, reason, for the reason I have given that uh, I think this is critical here. If you look at the benches of the Tory party, they begin to empty out. Now, there was some committee hearings on that day. Uh, with the, exception the amount of Conservatives that are leaving their benches right now uh, that far surpasses that. I think that's an indication of how many people in his own party support what he's actually saying right now. Thank you, Mr Speaker. As I speak, the public is pouring over the sordid details of what went on out of the public eye behind the high gates and the walls of the Prime Minister's residence. And the report is damning. And the Prime Minister, in the words of the report, must bear responsibility for the culture. A fish rots from the head. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This Prime Minister has adopted a systematic, concerted and sinister pattern of evasion. Truthfulness, honesty, and transparency do not enter his vocabulary. It is just not part of his way of being, and it speaks for the type of man that he is. Credibility, truth, morality all matter, and the Prime Minister has been found lacking time and time again. He can shake his head, but that is the reality, Prime Minister. Ethics have to be part of our public life. An ethical behaviour has to be at the core of the demeanour and the response of any Prime Minister. The Prime Minister brings shame on the office and has displayed contempt not only to the members of this House, but to every single person who followed the rules. They stayed away from family, those who missed funerals, those who lost someone they loved. So when the Tory members opposite retire to the 1922 committee this evening. I hope they will bear in mind the now infamous government advert featuring a desperately ill COVID patient. It said, look into her eyes and tell her you never bend the rules. If they don't submit a letter, if they don't remove this Prime Minister, how will they ever, ever look at their constituents in the eye Ever again. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is a damning report about the absence of leadership, focus, and discipline in Number 10, the one place where you expect to find those attributes in abundance. I made my point and my position very clear to the Prime Minister. He does not have my support. But a question I humbly put to my colleagues is Are you willing, day in and day out, to defend this behaviour publicly? Can we continue to govern without distraction, given the erosion of the trust with the British people? And can we win the general election on this current trajectory? The question I place to the Prime Minister is now. Mr Speaker, I am being heckled by my own people. If we cannot work out what we are going to do, then the broad church of the Conservative Party will lose the next general election. But my question to the Prime Minister is very clear on the question of leadership, can he think of any other Prime Minister who would have allowed such a culture of indiscipline to take place under their watch? And if it did, would they not have resigned? Uh, well, uh, Mr Speaker, I think to answer the question that he uh, put to uh, all of us on these benches, I think the answer is overwhelmingly and emphatically yes, uh, we are going to go on uh, and win the next general election, uh, but we're going to get on with the job, Mr Speaker. Ed David. Mr Speaker, the Prime Minister says he's sorry, but he's only sorry he got caught. He didn't care then, as he parted during lockdown, when people couldn't see their dying loved ones. He didn't care last year when he insisted that no rules had been broken. And he doesn't care now when families across our country are struggling to heat their homes, fill their cars and put feed on the table with a cost of living crisis that has only deepened while the Prime Minister has been scrambling to save his own skin. So, Mr Speaker, can the Prime Minister look the British people in the eye and name one person just one person he cares about more than himself. Yeah. Yeah.
I don't know if you remember this Conservative politician. He's the one that stood up about a month ago and um, and said basically he wanted Prime Minister to resign, that I didn't have confidence in him anymore. This is the Conservative politician that lost a family member, and here he is giving him another chance and watch his reaction. For the inquiry report. So I was very surprised to read in the Times the intimation that he may have asked Sue Gray not to publish the report at all. Is there any truth to that suggestion, Prime Minister? Mr Speaker, what uh, Sue Gray has published is entirely uh, for Sue Gray and, uh, and she, it is a, a wholly independent uh, report, Mr Speaker. Boris Sherman. So this is the only politician worth his salt, Chris Bryant. This is the way it should have been said by the leader of the opposition, this guy's boss, uh, Sir Keir Starmer. Listen to this. Chris Brown. Thank you, Mr Speaker. What a load of baloney. Excuse after excuse after excuse. And it simply doesn't wash, and it won't wash with the British public, who are sick and tired of being taken for fools. The truth is, the Prime Minister encouraged the gatherings. He attended the gatherings. He poured the drinks at the gatherings. And he even raised a toast at the gatherings. So he knew perfectly well that these gatherings had taken place. And the most despicable thing of all is that Sue Gray says... She saw multiple examples of a lack of respect and poor treatment of security and cleaning staff because they knew what the rules meant, even if nobody else does. Does he show no contrition, no sense of shame that Downing Street under him has been a cesspit full of arrogant, entitled narcissists? Uh, Mr Speaker, as I've said uh, to the House already, I think that it is absolutely disgraceful in any circumstances uh, to be rude uh, to people uh, who are helping you and rude to, uh, to staff, rude to custodians. It's intolerable uh, and I will make sure that uh, those who are guilty of it uh, apologise or are otherwise disciplined. Jack and now we're hearing reports that one of those custodians, in fact one of the cleaners, contracted COVID um, and died through it. Um, so, you know, it leaves lots of questions of where did he catch COVID, did he catch it while he was at work, in which case these parties could well have affected that. So, you know, this is not just about uh, silly choices about having drinks at work anymore. This is people's lives. People's lives. People were dying. And even Douglas Ross, the Scottish Conservative flip-flop politician, has flipped back again. Now he doesn't support Boris anymore. Now he's saying that after the war's over, he's going to be wanting Boris to resign again. You know, it's, it's just incredible. It's a circus. I think the Conservatives have really damaged themselves this time. I think it's going to be very, very obvious in the next general election.